hello and uh, welcome everyone welcome to my another webinar where i'm going to talk about type orm so type orm is a typescript supported library which is providing us the object relational mapping so we have a lot of uh, orms on and odms in node.js right like uh, node.js connecting to mongodb mysql postgres uh, all different kind of database so these what these orms are doing these orms are supporting us the integration of the node.js services with the database so torm uh, type orm is one of the orm same as sqlize but i think more popular because it does support typescript so in this video we are going to explore more about type orm and how it fits with nest.js with a simple application and how we can manage the basic relationships with the type ORM. So type ORM is something which is, uh, I mean the concepts of type ORM relationships are inherited from the Spring or Hibernate like ORM. Spring is a framework and Hibernate is a kind of ORM for Java. There we are defining the annotations for our entities, right? SQLize works in different ways. Type ORM works in different way. In type ORM, we will be defining the entities with all different kind of annotations like annotation column, annotation unique, annotation ID, right, annotation entity. So it's kind of like we were doing the same kind of concepts in Java. So you can say that it is inherited something from there, but it is making this object oriented programming more strong with the TypeScript. Okay, so we'll not do a comparison because SQLize is good at its own place. Type ORM is good at its own place. Type ORM has more support with the TypeScript typings. So that's why it is became, becoming more popular with uh, all the different uh, frameworks coming, coming up in TypeScript. Okay, if we talk, just talk about SQLize story with TypeScript that didn't go well, uh, you will get into a trouble and I just read different blogs about it okay the support of TypeScript with the SQLize is not that efficient so we can just move away SQLize if you are writing your applications totally in Next.js and purely in TypeScript then I will suggest you go ahead with the, ty uh, with the type ORM it is getting matured enough like it, it will get mature same as SQLize over the period of time but it is intuitive and I mean when you just look at the the schema models if I just talk about these are kind of schema models which we are going to define we will be using these annotation entity annotation column right we will be defining the relationships like one to one one to many many to many many to one all these kind of relationships in our entity now our type ORM will read these entities and will create a database tables for us right this is like a reverse engineering process if you just define your entities in entities models and use your type ORM and type ORM will just create the database connection and then we'll start feeding the start doing the sync of all these entities with the database okay there are multiple ways of doing it we'll, we'll go to that part uh, later okay so SQLize is written in JavaScript, no official TypeScript typing it might be that is in uh, development phase, higher learning curve, it is SQLize is available but not that much popular but uh, in previous projects I use SQLize, in the current project I am using type ORM and I see a huge difference there when it comes to a TypeScript support, that is the major advantage I see. Okay, when we look at the advantage, uh, apart from type, type ORM and SQLize, what all other things are available? right next loopback and type ORM apart from SQLize and they have their own advantage and disadvantage if we talk about this this is also a type ORM I think this is no this is more popular as a query builder according to my research so type ORM typings are maintained by community but it's not full-blown ORM it has amazing query builder which I will say you don't need to write queries you can customize the queries using query builder so again the same thing if it is not full blown type ORM then we have to look back for other resources. It's a complete framework like Express and Koa and not an ORM. So loopback or uh, I will say sales.js these are kind of full blown uh, solutions, full blown framework not as a ORM but they have some part of ORM available in the 
framework itself so they are tightly coupled with the implementation you can't just use their ORMs okay now why type ORM okay there are many advantages okay it has good query builder like uh, Nexus and built-in cache you might have heard about uh, the Hibernet cache Hibernet 11, 11, 1, level 2 cache same kind of cache we can maintain with the type ORM entities while doing a query okay easy to learn and it is this is important influenced by hibernate and entity framework so there are in java there are many entity frameworks available hibernate is one of them now uh, spring jp and all are available so it is influenced and uh, we are defining a lot of things with the entities only the validations we will be introducing there the relationships all the different kind of entities attributes will be defining it and most uh, promising is it is written in typescript okay easy to maintain typescript classes allows the extension of custom logic you might be creating a base entity and base entity is being extended in the another entity so this kind of relationship also you can maintain in the entities okay supported by all the database and many more okay basic type ORM entity uh, I will just talk about this entities like here there are two entities I'm talking about profile and user profile has one to many relationship with the uh, user has one to one relationship with the profile here we are talking about one user will have one profile one profile will belongs to one user so using just one notation we can just specify that in the user one to one join column because uh, one column it is going to join this is the profile entity this is the user entity right so everything is coming from uh, type ORM and while inserting data or while fetching the data we just need to take care of this relationship that uh, either you first create profile and then give a reference of profile in the user okay something like this so in one to one database one to one relationship we will create a profile okay we will save the profile and then we will attach the profile to the user and save the user okay uh, okay so Another thing is how we are defining all these relationships. Okay, so type ORM is something like this. So user is nothing but an entity. We are setting some attribute and we are using the repository. Uh, this is a type ORM has a repositories associated with every model. So you can just do a repository dot save and we are passing user as an entity. When you just wanted to fetch the data. I mean it has a good support of async await await repository dot find it will give you all the records find one it will it, it is like find by id default or you want to put a condition then it is a find one based on this particular condition so it will run the where query where first name is this and last name is this if you wanted to remove something then repository dot remove timber timber can be just an object like this i find this particular so this is the entity object it is returning you just pass it so it will remove this particular record okay simple data fetch data save data update data delete are kind of same operation in different ORMs okay now how, how can you install it like if I wanted to use type ORM right away in my project can be an SGS project or can be express TypeScript project so I just you just need to install it globally and you just need to take care of this particular module this helps us to uh, enable the TypeScript features. I mean, it exposes the typings supported by uh, type ORM. Okay, and just add the typings for Node.js, type nodes. Okay, next thing is you can just create a starter project also, uh, like most of the CLI uh, libraries provides it, type ORM in it, your project name and database MySQL. So it will just initialize the configurations for MySQL. Initialization configurations means because you are going to connect to MySQL so all the attributes all the connection attributes for type ORM to connect to MySQL it will be exposed by this something like this so this is kind of ORM config we are going to have for MySQL username password database synchronized to whenever you just do this it will just drop all the tables and create again all the entities because what type ORM is going to do is it will look at all your entities and it is going to create a database for those entities if you make synchronized true then always it will drop all the tables and will create them again migration seeders all these are the concepts of any type any ORM like you created a table 
and you push that code CLCD run and now that project is in the production now we wanted to alter some column change introduce a new table all these things will happen through the migrations you have to write migrations you have to run those migrations using type ORM like you introduce a new column new table so without impacting anything in the project you will be just introducing new relationship and all that will be done by the migrations you can also create a seeders to seed if, uh, some real-time data or fake data in your tables okay so this is a simple connection details I mean, I mean how we connect to a MySQL database in context to a type uh, in context to a nest.js it will be a little different because with the nest.js we are going to use type ORM nest.js module okay in context of express js typescript we will be using same kind of syntax where we will be calling create connection passing all the configurations we will be passing all the entities we have in the current projects and if the connection is successful then we are good otherwise you can just keep trying it maybe database is down uh, database is coming up if you are not able to connect just do a retry by doing a sleep method so just by calling some callback okay in this connection we are going to have only photo entity so you can just run all the operations on the photo entity by getting the connection manager okay so type ORM's entities are kind of sim simple we can manage all different kind of relationship so first I talk about one to one relationship here so if I wanted to insert some data right how we can do is uh, simply I will create a this is a profile and user so I will create a profile first and I will create a user so profile equal to new profile I will add, add attributes and then profile dot save this profile I will assign to user and then I will save user so this is a one to one relationship and while fetching it what we can do is it uh, type ORM provides connection repository like uh, user repo and we can get it from the connection object connection which we got it get repository and the entity you need to pass now you got the repository now you can just do write await uh, user repository dot find if you make it empty then it is going to give you all the user entities but what I want is I also want profile data so I will just do a relations and I will also pass profile here because I want the profile of individual user also coming with this okay so this is how we are doing a eager fetch with the user data I also want a profile data even I'm asking or not if you are just associating relationships then for every user the profile information will also come in it's one to one so one user will have one profile okay this is typically one to one similarly we can uh, have like uh, one to many and many to one relationship so my one to one one to many and many to one relationship can be a simple user and photos I uh, will just talk about that and how it is different from this yeah so we have a photos photos has a many to one means and this is a user so user will have many photos okay and single photo will be uh, I mean many photos photos will be associated with a single user or single user will have a many photos right so it's like a, in user entity it's one to many okay photos will be array for the user because one user will have a many photos right in this case what we will do we'll just create a photos entities we'll keep saving it and then finally when we wanted to create a user we will put photos array in the user object so if we just do we will just create a user entities ok like photo1 photo2 now while creating a user so I am creating a entity user and in this user if I set some property like name and then I can set the photos and that will be the array of photo of photo instance which we have created photo one and then I can just do await uh, same connection dot manager this 
this is how we are able to see the data right now while fetching it we can just provide the same thing we'll just get the repository user and then user repository dot find one connection dot get repository user and i want to get all the photos for a particular user so user repository dot find right so it it look nice when we just go through this particular relationship one too many and the data fetch process is simple we are uh, for saving we are just uh, initiating connection dot manager and saving the entities while getting it we have to first get the repository either user repository photo repository its entity repository and then just do a find find one find with some condition okay find one remove all these operations are available okay so type orm entities we can also we can create a base entities and uh, we can extend it so like these are the two columns which are going to be common on on all the entities so we can extend it and these will be available everywhere okay caching uh, it's a built-in caching is available you just default provide a default caching so for a particular queries if you want to provide a caching then you can enable it so it is available for find by id on a particular entity right so you just need to provide a repository for which and the cache key so it will internally manage that cache for a particular query okay that is just a advanced feature and it's also provide a query builder like next.js so create query users it is doing inner join with this where condition and giving us the count okay that, that you can explore from the documentation so you can extend it so this particular section i will talk about in the context of nest cs how we are going to manage all these connection manager using type or a module okay um, so, okay type or is getting mature like currently we have two dotos recently released it has a built-in cache it's on redis connections and I mean it is getting matured but with the support of TypeScript I think it will it will get a lot many attentions okay so now what we will do is we will just take a look at one particular example which we have created in nest.js okay so in nest.js I have one single entity uh, I will show you that entity first of all type rmconfig.ts configts here i'm providing all the details db dialect uh, database details where i kept my entities the migrations simple okay now uh, we can just take a look on my package.json and this project is already available i think you can take a look we can just configure some migrations if we want otherwise it's a simple single entity so this is a contact controller i will be making a call i'm just passing some attributes and i'm using swagger module for this so once our application is bootstrapped we will be able to launch the swagger and we will be able to see what all apis uh, this particular project is exposing and i mean in the current scenarios we are dealing with node.js and mysql so it's better to do things on docker not on your local mysql instance and all so you can take a look on docker compose file here i have a mysql instance and one node.js okay entry point is there for the node.js instance this is the environment file so in this env file i have created uh, my database configuration okay and this is the controller and this is the service now we just talk about the service the important part in this we have contact service so same as we were talking about the repository right for contact entity i'm injecting the contact repository and i'm doing the same kind of operation in the service contact repository dot find contact repository dot find by email if email is already existing then throw bad request exception contact already exists otherwise create a new contact and save it using this dot contact repository dot save so only the difference is with the type or a module in nest.js you just you, know, you just deal with the repository of a particular entity like contact repository user repository address repository and you will just run all these query methods like this okay like find one find one by email these are some custom um, pre-built find one find one with a condition delete by id all all these are crud operations are already available okay i mean you can just have a uh, two entities and you can uh, define the relationships and uh, you can just write simple code here contact controller is simply calling the service dot create 
in create DTU I'm just passing basic attributes I think I can show some example on this I think this will be the base for swagger. Yeah, so these are my APIs. Get. So I think I didn't create a table in the system. So what, what, what error I'm getting is no such table exists, right? Because I have this entity, but I didn't run the migrations for my, I mean, I didn't run the DB sync entity. So this is how we need to take care while doing a setup. So what we need to do is we just need to enter into the container of this, we'll just start a kit, attach here. And I will just npm run db sync. It's an npm command I have. And what it is doing is it will try to create a table in the database. Okay, let's do it. Meanwhile, we can just look at it. Okay, so tables are created, right? And how it is created? Because we are running the type ORM CLI using our package.json you can see we are running uh, db sync db create db migrate so we did run db sync what it will do is type rm cli and schema sync so what schema sync is doing it is looking at your entities and just creating that okay schema sync is always going to drop and create again okay so if you run it again then it will drop and create again now we can just play around with this thing now we should get data okay it's coming empty now like this is a crud kind of thing try it out so i created some data here and if i execute it now i'm getting data right and there are some checks like contact already exists so we just need to change it i don't have any particular validation for email phone and all just these are accepting as a string as an argument but you can now uh, we have two records right so this is pretty much about uh, type ORM with the NSJS. Now things are good. We are able to see the logs coming for the queries which we are executing. Okay. So it is purely dockerized and uh, here for uh, running this, like if you wanted to run it in debug mode, you just create a node mode.json. I mean, this helps you to run the TypeScript projects because TypeScript project, you always need to compile it and then run it so it on the fly okay, on the fly it is running it's ts node okay yeah so coming back to our example because it's purely nice.js what we are doing in this controller we are passing a dto dto is just doing a simple validation we can also define the api property because we are using nest.js swagger module which internally creating the api documentation if you are using the api property and these are the internal validation that Name should be of string not empty, email should be of string not empty. These kind of class validations we can add from class validator like we used to do the Joey validation. Now it comes to the controller. Controller services are injected inside a controller and we are making a call to the service and we are injecting these repositories. So NestJS is a modular structure like Angular where we are creating a modules and we are injecting the providers like services we are injecting adding in the module so that those services can be available inside the controllers. So if you just take a look on to this one, here we provided a contact service, right? And to access all the entities using type or a module, we have to provide the contact entity. Now I can access contact repository in my controllers. Okay, I will be publishing one separate series on how to deal with the Mongoose module uh, or Mongoose module we have, type or a module, sequelize module with an SDS. So that will be a different sort of thing, but this is a simple contact entity we have and we are working with that. Okay. And we can explore many more features uh, in NestJS. NestJS is very powerful framework right now. I already published a webinar that why should you use NestJS? 
you can go ahead with the TypeScript and Express. I mean, write your Express code in the TypeScript style and you can use the type ORM there also. But Next.js is giving you all the inbuilt features of creating interceptors, middlewares, validations, request validations. It has all the inbuilt capabilities. I mean, new modules are getting introduced. Next.js Redis, Next.js Microservices, Next.js Scrud. All are pre-built, supported in this framework. Okay, that is all I have for this webinar. I will keep, I will keep posting more about Next.js and TypeScript.